My favorite scripture, <laughs> for I know the plans that I have oh, for you, yeah. uh -oh. declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. future. Now, a lot of people who are Christians, they kind of have this visual image of the importance of this scripture. Put it in your pocket, stick it in your Bible. But this is how big and how important mm. okay. this scripture is for what God wants it to mean to us. For I know the plans that I have for you, that I have for you. Wow, all of my life I have lived by knowing that God has a plan for my life. Mm -hmm. I was born with flat feet, okay? Uh, <laughs> and uh, didn't really know it until we started buying school shoes. So we went to the, the shoe, shoe store then, hello, and bought Buster Brown shoes. Now, some of you don't know what those are. Oh, wow. uh, Buster Brown shoes. Way back. And right. we, put cookie, we put yeah. cookies in them, okay? We put cookies in them uh, to kind of build up the arch, support the arch, okay? Cookies. They called them cookies. See, not real. You didn't eat them. <laughs> they're, it's showing their age. They're, they're, they're young. They're, they're oh, young. Okay. Oh, that was good. <laughs> we put padding. Okay. So uh, I thought, well, you know, I'll just live with this. Paul had a thorn in his flesh. I've got cookies in my shoes. You know? uh, so seventh grade comes, and uh, I got out of PE because I had flat feet. And at the time, I thought it was really kind of cool. Hey, I don't have to take phys ed. Mm. Uh, so it was cool then, but in retrospect, Ryan, now I don't know all the ins and outs, all the details of football, basketball, and baseball. So if I'm watching a football game, I don't really know about what's happening at the yard line and, and the penalties and all that. It's okay. not really that important. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so when, when, other, when other guys were playing football, I was playing the piano. I took piano lessons at age nine from Frank Meyer. Uh, he's probably passed on by now. And he would sit there in my 30-minute lesson, draw cartoons. So he gave me lessons. For, <laughs> seriously, draw cartoons to, to him through my lesson. So I, I, I was with him for two years. Then he told me, he said, I'm moving to Florida. Well, I don't think he moved to Florida, so I don't get that. Anyway, <laughs> so from there on out, it was just God and me and John W. Peterson and Lillis. So I taught myself how to play by ear. So. At age 16, uh, I wrote my first song, okay, and I didn't know much about songwriting. Let's hear it. Uh, yeah, you're going to hear it if you don't laugh. <laughs> promise you won't laugh. No, okay. no we won't Oh, yeah, promise. we promise we won't laugh. We won't okay, promise. Okay, so this is what I wrote when I was 16. Uh, yes. God is... Now, these chords weren't at 16. These are later chords. God is wonderful. He saved my soul from sin. I wonder what's coming. God, once my, was, once my soul was blind, but now I see within. Soon I'm going home to live forevermore. God shall be then more wonderful than before. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's what God gave me at 16. Was, it wouldn't win an award, but that was a start. Got a scholarship to Ohio State University. Started out in architectural engineering. Uh, after the first semester, I could have stayed with that, but I decided I didn't want to devote my life to building buildings. So I switched to business education and math. And after six years at Ohio State and two degrees in business, God called me up and said, by the way, my plan for you okay. right. is not to build buildings. Right. My plan for you is to build songs. Yeah. Now, because I trusted God, okay. went back to school, uh, got my first degree in music education. Okay. So it's like I wanted God's plan for my life. The real problem we have is a lot of time, Tim, we, we don't know exactly what it is. We flounder around trying to find it. Uh, it was 1968, and uh, I was just ready to turn 26, so I got this invitation from the Army to take a physical. Uh, we were in the midst of Vietnam War, and uh, I'm telling you... But you were flat-footed. I'm telling you, when I got the letter, 
when I got the letter, my world crashed down because my mind was thinking about the 68,000 young men and women that didn't come back from Vietnam. And I thought, Lord, if I go to Vietnam, there's such a good chance that I will never come back. I will never get to take advantage of all this schooling. And so very reluctantly, I took the physical. Well, I had to. There was no choice. It was not an invitation. I waited for the letter. The letter came back, and I opened it, and it was, we're sorry to inform me that you have been rejected for service in the United States Army. Reason? Flat feet. Uh-oh. There you go. Yes. So after that, I, uh, I started writing. I got a second master's degree in music, formed the trio. We got a recording contract. I started teaching young people in Bible college for 20-some years. And right before my 42nd birthday, um, 1982, um, I went to the Benson Company with enough songs for two Second Coming musicals. My plan, my plan. And uh, the president laughed it off and they said, churches won't buy Second Coming musicals, but they will buy Christmas. Lanny, why don't you write a song about Isaiah 9-6? Okay, went away, brought it back. Uh, well, we had sung it, so we know what we felt. Uh, he said, no, 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 we shouldn't put in the Christmas musical. And furthermore, Lanny, quote, you can write a better song. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, I begged, bartered, bartered, pleaded, everything. They finally let me put this song in the Christmas musical, Thou Shall Call His Name Jesus. I suggested that we do a duet arrangement. Don Marsh did one orchestration. The president of the Benz Company said, I don't like it, throw it away, start over. I mean, this child had a difficult time being born. So I uh, did a second arrangement. I said, let's pair up Sandy Patty, Lorna Harris. And you know, the rest is history. The rest is history. Uh, and the name of that song, of course, was not God is Wonderful, but 26 years later, more than wonderful. Right. Can you imagine, Yvonne, when I was just a 16-year-old kid trying to figure out what God wanted me to do, and he gave me a song, and he's thinking, you don't understand this now. <laughs> I'm giving you your first song, but if you could understand what I see 26 years down the pike, I'm going to give you a song that's more wonderful than this one. Come on, come on. Uh, now, put it in perspective. If I had my way at the Benson Company and we would have written a second coming musical, the song, More Than Wonderful, would never have been assigned. It would never have been written. It would never have gotten a Grammy. It would have never got, it would not have been, but I know the plans that I have for you. And I'm, I'm here to tell you folks that like, we serve a good God and he loves us and he has a great plan for us. So uh, Sandy and Larnell, they sang it to uh, about him for he's more. So Ryan and Yvonne on the new Give Him Glory project, we put the camera at a different angle. And so now instead of singing about him, we've made it praise and worship and they're singing to him. And you're more wonderful. Watch out Sandy and Larnell. <laughs> Oh, we love this song. And I love how you guys sing it. Praise the Lord. Give God the glory. Amen. Oh, you promised us that you would be a counselor, a mighty God, and the Prince of Peace. You us that you would be a father and would love us with a love that would not cease. Well, I tried you and I found your promises are true. You're everything you said that you Two words I know could not begin to tell Jesus just how much you really mean to me. For you're more wonderful than my mind can conceive. You're more wonderful. 